Let me see the singers in the house. Where the I don't even know. The weather outside is it's nice. <laughs> it's nice, so delightful. And since we've got no place to go, let's talk. Okay. <laughs> let's talk. You know, when Mr. Felton asked me to speak, I was excited. I really was excited about coming here to speak today. And they told me I had to speak for an hour. You know when somebody just pops your bubble and he speaks for an hour? I didn't tell him I love to speak, but somebody must have told him. I think it's Shavania. <laughs> somebody must have told him I love to speak. Um, so we have an hour together. And we're going to have fun. It's going to be interactive. I don't want to stand up here and just talk to you. I want you to talk back to me. And when he told me about motivation, wanted it to be, the presentation to be surrounded, to be centered on motivation. I thought for a little bit. And the story of the, um, the tortoise, the tortoise and the hare, do you know that story? The tortoise and the hare that went on a race, and you know, a hare moves real fast. And the tortoise moves real slow. And the tortoise won the race. So I thought to myself, I'm going to talk about the swiftless race. Sounds like an oxymoron. This doesn't go together. But that's what it will take to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. The swiftless race, persistently enduring to the finish line. Persistently enduring to the finish line. Do you know what a marathon is? Let me see who knows what a marathon is. You want to tell me what you think a marathon is? Tell me what you think a marathon is. It's a long race. Yeah, it is a long race. When I looked it up, the definition of a marathon is a long distance running event with an official distance of 42.195 kilometers, which is about 26, 27 miles and it's usually run as a road race. That's a marathon. That's 27 miles is a long, it's, it's, it's almost twice the distance from here to my office in Warsaw. Almost twice the distance. That's a marathon. When I used to live in New York, I used to run. I mean, you can't tell now because, you know, I'm round, but hey, round is a shape. I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, I used to run, I used to, that's how I used to exert my energy. When I've had a rough day at work, I run, I'd come home and change and run. And there was a marathon, and all my friends said, Vicky, you should do it, you should go do the marathon. Go do it, you can do it, you can win. And you know, sometimes we can listen to our friends and get all hyped up and like, yeah, yeah, I can do this. So I went and I registered and paid my good $50 got my little number to put on my chest and my back. I felt like I was wearing a cape. I'm going to run the marathon because I run every day. I can do this. And, you know, I started out, got there the, the morning. Everybody was fresh, bushy-eyed, bright-eyed, and everybody high-fiving everybody. Yeah, we're going to do this. Like, yes, I was hyped. Got on the starting line and we took off and everybody's going at a nice little pace and I'm, we're high-fiving everybody. People are running and talking about their kids and having water cooler conversations. Well, this is cool. I can do this. Then say about mile 10, I noticed there's a different, people started speeding up and I followed everybody I'm speeding up to. I'm like, oh, this is how you win. Cool, I can do this. Mile 15, and people are high-fiving. I'm like, don't touch me. <laughs> Who are you people? Why are we doing this? Give me back my $50 <laughs> and take your number. Mile 20, they're like, how you doing? Get away from me. I don't want to talk to anybody. But I made it dragging to the finish line. 
but I was almost there. I'm telling you, that's the finish line. And the guy is there standing with the little thing to put around my neck, and he says, come and get it. You can do it. There are no losers. And I'm like, says the guy who has never done this. <laughs> and he, I stood there, and he's like where she is. And he says, come and get it. And I said, I can't. He says, yes. I said, no, I can't. And I had to dig deep, real deep, and put one foot before the other. And when he put that piece of thing around my neck, I felt like a victim. I looked back to cheer everybody on, and there was nobody. Like, God, I'm last. But I did it. And what it took was endurance. I want you to roll that word around your tongue for a little bit. I had to keep, I had to keep asking myself, what kept me going to the finish line? Endurance. Endurance. I wanted to finish it. I wanted that little string that probably probably made at home the night before. I wanted it around my neck because when I looked at everybody else, they were wearing it. And that little piece of string represented something big. That I completed this task I set before me. I did it. That's what that represented. What is endurance? When you hear the word endurance, what does it say to you? Tell me your definition of endurance. Your measure of um, strength or tolerance. Your measure of strength or tolerance. I like that. Anybody else? Persistence. Striving. Persistence. Keep striving. striving. Keep striving. Yes. I looked up the word. It said the ability or strength to continue or to last despite fatigue, despite stress, or any other adverse condition. I was tired. <clears throat> By mile 10, my muscles ached. I felt dizzy. By mile 15, I felt like there was a huge, like my cat, the cotton ball my cat coughed up was in my throat. By mile 20, I was ready to lay down. My body wouldn't even let me lay down. That's how much I hurt. But despite the adverse conditions, despite the challenges, despite the fatigue, despite the stress, I endured. I had to finish it. That word became one of my best friends throughout college, throughout my career, still is. Endurance. Let's look at a, the coordinated preparation for a race. You hear about the race, you make a decision whether you want to run in the race or not. So you've decided you want to run, you want to do this marathon. You've made that decision, now you have to commit to the decision. Because you can decide, I'm going to have lunch today and not commit to it because other things will come up. Am I making sense? Once you commit to a decision, you see it through. Nothing else will come in the way. Then you prepare for the race. You get the proper gear. Well, see, that's something to I didn't do. Nobody told me that you might not want to wear sweats to do a marathon. Let me tell you something. At mile 20, the sweats feel like 10 pounds. Now I understand why when you look at the TV and see these people running, they look practically naked. You need to be. They should just let you run naked. You need to be. So you've gotten your proper gear, you've gotten the training schedule, which will include, of course, from the moment you wake up to when you go to bed. That's the training schedule. It will encompass what you eat, what you drink, what time you go to bed, what time you wake up, how much time you give your body rest, how much time you train your body, all of that, right down to the appropriate snacks. 
And the day of the race, you warm up, you you know, you get into the, the spirit with everybody. It's very easy when you have 500 other people cheering and saying, yeah, you're going to be in it. Yeah. You don't even know where it's coming from. And when you're running, take advantage of the fluid stops. Take advantage of the fluid stops. Water, Gatorade, so you can replenish your energy for the race and don't burn out or give up. I like the race. If you listen to all the steps, it applies to everyday life. Stay focused on your finish line. That's your motivation. You entered the race because you want to win. Stay focused on your finish line. And listen to the cheers of the people along the way. Because sometimes when you feel like getting up, giving up, those people on the sidelines, yeah, you can do it. They know you can't. <laughs> they know, oh, she's going to bust now. But they cheer you on. And just their voices will push you right over that finish line. How does that apply today? You have committed to a decision to come here. You have made that decision and you have committed to that decision. That's why you're in this room. You've committed to that decision. Take advantage of the fluid stops. Your resource centers, your faculty, your mentors, take advantage. Themselves. They will replenish you. They will motivate you. They'll hold you up. Take advantage of your fluid stops. Stay focused on your finish line. What brought you to James Brown? That's your finish line. What brought you here? Let me hear some of the reasons you guys walk through the doors. Let me hear some of your Nurse. You want to be a nurse. That's your finish line. A better, life. a better life. That is your finish line. Anyone else? To be financially stable. To be financially stable. That is your finish line. Anyone else? To be a teacher. To be a teacher. That's your finish line. Whatever. It is that brought you through these doors is your finish line. Stay focused. Despite the adverse conditions, despite the stress, despite the fatigue, don't give up. Utilize your fluid stops. Stay focused. Listen for the cheers of the people on your sidelines. There are three types of people you'll run into your entire life. You have the stagnant, you have the stable, and you have the propellers. Let me explain them. The stagnant are the people you tell them, you know, I want to go back to school. No, you, how are you going to do that? You've got the kids, you've got the house, you've got, the, you can't, no, it's not a good time and they will talk you out of your own dream. They will talk you out of it because they're not doing anything with their lives. And they like you to stay right where you are. With them, those are the stack. They're like crabs. You ever see crabs in a bucket? You put two crabs in a bucket and neither one will make it out. As soon as one reaches up, the other one pulls them back down. Neither one will make it out. Those are the stagnant people. You don't want any of those in your lives. Any, not one. Then you have your propellers. Those are the people, if you want to fly a plane, yeah, 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 let's do it. I want to buy a boat, yeah, 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 let's do it. I want to buy a house, yeah, 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 let's do it. I want to get married, yeah, 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 let's do it. They're right with you. They're great people, they'll burn you out. They will burn you up if you have too much in your, if your life is saturated with propellers, they will burn you out because no is not an option for them. Or weight is not an option. 
or let's think it through. Is it no? Is it whatever you want to do? Yeah, let's do it. You want a few of those. You want you want a few of those. Make sure you have a few of those in your pocket. And then you have the staple. I don't want to do that. Well, okay. Let's talk about why you don't want to do it. Okay. So you don't want to do it now. No problem. Well, I want to do that. Okay, let's talk about why you want to do that. Okay, then we'll, we'll do that. <clears throat> Whatever you want to do, they will support you in that decision. You want a few of those because they'll balance out the propellers. You don't want to have 90% propellers and 10% staple, or else you'll be walking around doing this. <laughs> those are the propellers. That's what they do. I'm a propeller. So I know, I know, they will burn you out because your dream becomes their dream. And they, they, they harness it as if it's really, as if it's our dream. We see it for you. The moment you pitch it to us, we see the finish line. We see the end. So we move with intensity and tenacity because we want it so badly for you. Too many of us will burn you out. You need a few staples. Shavanya is the staple. That's her. Shavanya West is a staple. She calms me. She really does. Yes, okay, or no, okay. But wherever I am, that's where she needs me. You need a few of those in your life. Let's look at some athletes who have endured. Catherine Switzer, she ran the Boston Marathon. Remember what I said a marathon is? 27 miles. Eight times. Eight times in one month. Who is she? What on God's green earth is she trying to prove? She then ran the New York Marathon four times in two weeks on a 100 degree day and did it in three hours and seven minutes. We know Hussein Bolt, don't we? Mm -hmm. Jamaican, six Olympic gold, record holder. Asafa Powell, also Jamaican. 100 meter race, 88 times and never lost. Scott Jurek, US. Oof. He ran the Badwater Ultra Marathon in Death Valley. Death Valley has nowhere for fluid stops. There's nowhere for fluid stops. You're literally running it on your own steam. And he did that seven years in a row. Bob Ray, he ran two to four miles per day, every day. Are you ready for this? For 13,885 days. Two to four miles per day, every day, for 13,885 days. That's 38 years consistently. Pam Reed, she became the first person to complete a 300 mile run without sleep. She completed the distance in 79 hours without sleep. Paul Stasso ran from Argan coast to the coast of Delaware. He covered 3,260 miles in 108 days. That's 30.2 miles per day. 30.2 miles per day. So here's my question. What brand of cereal do these people eat? <laughs> What brand of cereal do they eat? What do they all have in common? 
what is their motivation? What do they have that, and I won't say that you don't have, because I don't believe that. What is it that they have that you have? What do you think they have? Endurance. Endurance. But there's something also very important that they have that you have, because you have it, that's why you're here. They have a finish line to get to. That's what they have, that you have. That's what you share in common with these athletes. They have a finish line to get to. You have one. In the words of a Mississippi slave owner, knowledge, I want you to listen carefully, knowledge and slavery is incompatible. Think on that for a second. Knowledge and slavery is incompatible. Why is that? Why is that? Slavery and knowledge they be good to be free. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is freedom. Freedom to choose. Freedom to say yes, no. Knowledge is freedom. It is power. Knowledge and slavery cannot be compatible. Slavery, you have no power. You can't choose. But with knowledge, you can. Janetta B. Cole says, education is the single most consistent and powerful instrument for the advancement of an individual and a people. I love it. Education, single most consistent and powerful instrument for the advancement of you and us as a people. Because again, knowledge, education brings power. What is more deadly? A nuclear weapon? An atomic bomb? The F-2000 assault rifle, which is the most deadliest rifle on the planet Earth? Or your mind? What's more deadly? My mind. Why? Because I believe without the mind you can't accomplish anything. The mind is where everything, I, I don't want to like ramble, but yeah, it's okay. your mind is, I guess you can say, the blueprint to everything that you want to accomplish. So I love it. Whatever you speak into existence or whatever you aspire to be, it starts here first. So I love you, it. You imagine it, you vision it here first, and then you materialize it out there. Do we agree with what he says? Yes. Mm -hmm. I love the word blueprint, because it was the mind that created the blueprint for the other three things. You don't even have, you can be sick, you can be an invalid, be on your back, and your mind can do very dangerous things. You can do so much without leaving your house. It's just your mind. Your mind, the blueprint starts from your mind. So if you can think it, you can achieve it. If you can think it, you can do it. If you can conceive it, put it together in your mind and see the end result in your mind. You know, when I'm buying a house, my kids laugh at me because I walk in the house and I'll stand there and I'll go through every room. And I said, no, I can't see. I can't see that's living here. I'm like, mom, no, I can't. I can't see Christmas in this house. Because if I can walk through the empty, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if the roof is being torn off or the walls. I don't care if it needs another $20,000 worth of work. I can walk into a shamble and say, mm -hmm. this, this is home. This can be home. Because I can see the finished product. I can see the finish line. My mind has already recreated every room in that house. I just put up curtains and drapes and pictures and paint. It, the mind is already completed the house. And if the mind can do that, all your hands and feet has to do is follow suit.
So today, I leave you with two questions. And when you've answered them, you've discovered your finish line. Why, where am I going? And why am I going there? Where am I going? And why am I going there? You want to be a teacher. You want to be a nurse. You, she, she left, she wants to be financially stable. That's where she's going. But why do you want to be a teacher? Why do you want to be a nurse? You can want to go somewhere, but why do you want to go? That solidifies the purpose behind your finishing. You want to be a teacher, why? You want to be a nurse, why? It's not enough that you know where you're going. You have to also know why you're going there. I always knew I wanted to do it services. I always knew. Even when I was sitting in corporate America, I knew I wanted to do human services. It was my calling. It was a vocation. But I had to find out why I wanted to do it. And once I was able to answer that, it became my mission and my vision. And I've never stopped pursuing that. And because I knew why, because I knew why, and because my why encompassed everyone else around me, I, am, I consider myself successful in what I do. Because my why wasn't selfish. Am I making sense? It wasn't selfish, it encompassed humanity. It wasn't selfish. So it's not enough to know where you're going Figure out why you're, you want to go there. Figure that out. Let me leave you with this one thought. And I want you to hold fast to this because it's a very instrumental key to your success, to your finish line. Treat yourself whenever you can to noon times. Treat yourself whenever you can to noon times with people who have on their minds more than lunch. It is those with the boldest dreams who will awaken the best in us. Treat yourself whenever you can to noon times with people who have more on their minds than lunch. Get what I'm saying? Look for your propellers. Look for your cheering squad. Look for that. And while you're looking for your propellers, look for a few staples. And if today you can sit where you are and go through the list of people you know and you see stagnants, it's time to press the delete button on your phone. It's time because they will do nothing but hold you back. I promise you. Because you moving forward is not what they want for you. <laughs> Stay focused on your finish line. Whatever reason brings you to James Brunt is your finish line. Stay focused on your finish line. Don't lose sight of it. Don't worry about someone else's finish line. Stay in your lane. You see, again, with a race, whether you're running, cycling, whatever, if you go in someone else's lane, what happens? It's an accident, it's a catastrophe. Stay in your lane and focus on your finish line. A lot of times when runners are running or cyclists are riding, you know why they lose? Because they keep looking back at the person behind them and they lose momentum. Every time you look back, you lose momentum. Stay focused. Stay focused, stay in your lane, stay focused on your finish line. 
Thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry, do you have any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Nobody wants to know if I've ever ran another marathon? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you. Um, You're very welcome. You, I'm, I guess you could say, going through a tra uh, transition of um, breaking out of my comfort zone and being more outgoing, but I'm also trying to, I guess you could say, bring those closest to me with me. And what you said to me was really, really important. And I feel like I should teach my loved ones and my closest friends to um, learn to stay in the lane so stay your lane. they don't crash. I want to be able to inspire people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. To God be the glory. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I got a question. Uh, I'll let you talk about your country. Did you want to make No, I didn't. Okay. Uh, can you still not put hair? Your experience in Jamaica, with your experience in America, and let us know if it's some kind of learning experience. Um, um, I don't know if I am the right person to talk about Jamaica because I left Jamaica when I was six. But um, what I do know about, especially when it comes to education in the Caribbean, in the Caribbean on a whole. Education is key in the Caribbean, for the Caribbean people. Education is, you know, whether you live in a one room walk up with a family of 10, it is important that you get up and go to school. Education is so key. Um, I grew up in London, and um, again, the Caribbean, you know, is, is from the, the, the British constituency. And in, in London, again, education is, there's, there's no, there's no, I know I don't want to go to school, no, I don't want to go to college, no, I don't want, it, 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 it just doesn't exist, especially when you have Caribbean parents. It, that, that's, that's just not an option. Having an education is not an option. Because your, our parents never got a chance to go to college and they always want you to be better than them. They always want that, they want you to, to be at a higher level than they could have ever hoped to be. So, you know, to get up and say, I'm not, I don't wanna to go to school today. No, I, I, I don't think I'm gonna do college right now. What? No, that's not an option. And I kind of raised my kids that way. You know, I have an autistic son and everybody tells me, he's, you know, maybe college is not for him. So that's not an option. You know, I always tell my son, I'm not going to treat you special because the world is not going to treat you special. Yes, my expectations of you may be different from that of your sister, but I still have expectations. And college is one of those. I don't care if you bring me home, bring me home seeds, but you're going to graduate. Because without that, I don't know if you guys see the trend, but the garbage man is going to need a degree to pick up your garbage. That's where it's going. The garbage man is going to need a degree sooner or later. He's going to need an associate degree just to pick up your garbage. That's the trend. That is the trend. In the Caribbean, and funny, the United States recruit from the Caribbean. We've been doing it for years. For years. The best teachers pulls out of the Caribbean. The best doctors pulls right out of the Caribbean because we take education very, very seriously. And when you're coming, especially if you're coming from a poor family, you know that you need your education in order to rescue your family. You need it. You need it to rescue yourself and you need it to rescue your family. Um, there's a reason, I don't wanna ramble again, but I'm just in amazement right now. Um, to shorten the story, both of my parents were born in St. Catharines, Jamaica, and um, I know St. Catharines. <laughs> Been they, there one time. Yeah. They both um, didn't even go to high school. Exactly. But my mom came here, and now she's a nurse at Kingsland Nursing Home, mm -hmm. and my dad is a regional manager at BCPG. But they always say to me two things. They always say, um, you can't 
force a donkey to drink water. You can, you can take drink. a donkey to the water, but you can't make him drink. Right. And they also say, who can your well must feel. Yes. So, everything that you're saying just... Absolutely. It, it's hitting me here. Absolutely. And I, I can't even speak it. Absolutely. And I'm Education that. is very, very important to the Caribbean people. Yeah. It's, it's, it's our key to unlocking the chains. It's our key to unlocking the chains. It's, it's, it's key to the Caribbean people. Questions. Again, I can't speak much about Jamaica because when I go there, I'm just a tourist like everybody else. It's my home, it's my country, but I've left for so long. Any other questions? Are we motivated? Are we ready for the finish line? Can you think of, can you really sit here and think? I gave you three classes of people. Can you? Have you gone through your mental list and say, yeah, that, yeah, oh yeah, that one is. Have you done that? Yeah. First time I heard that, I did that. I sat right where I was and I said, oh yeah, mm-hmm, oh yeah. I could go through the list of people I know and put them in their category. And once you know who they are, you know what to do. You know exactly what to do. You know you have some people in your life, some things you can't tell them because they're not happy for you. They're not genuinely happy for you. They won't motivate you. They'll give you 101 reasons why you can't do that right now. They'll give you 101 reasons why. Those are the people you shake them loose. Shake them loose. So nurse, do you know why you want to go into nursing? Good. Do you know why you want to be a teacher? Then that's your finish line. Embrace it and move towards it. Despite adverse conditions, despite the fatigue, because sometimes you go home and you don't want to do the work. You don't want to, you don't want to do the paper. You don't want to do that assignment. You don't want, I've been there. I've been there. And I can tell you I'm a sucker for punishment because I did two masters. So I must, something's wrong with me. I'm telling you. But I, I had a finish line in my mind. There was a finish line. And that's what kept me going. The finish line, coupled with my endurance, kept me going. And it will keep you going. I promise you, it will keep you going. Stay true to your finish line. Shavanya West is our community educator and outreach specialist. Let's give them a hand. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we have some brochures and cards just in case you want to Thank you. 